Hello everyone, this is Kevin, your entrepreneur, and for our last story of the day, barring anything significant happening, um, is this article by MSN that pretty much of it's that, hey, yeah, those are the flying cars that Uber is making, uh, they're nowhere near to being close, and of course, there's going to be a big hurdle. Now, unlike the driverless cars, which people tell me all the time, oh, they're just around the corner, it's inevitable, and maybe they're right, I don't know. The flying cars do seem to be a bit trickier. Um, according to the article, some of the challenges facing the Uber flying car plan are the same ones that have plagued every such plan ever proposed. Safety and congestion. Filling the skies over major urban centers with cartoons is an order of magnitude more dangerous than filling the streets with traditional cars since at least an accident on the ground stays on the ground and an accident in the sky threatens everybody below. Uber is hardly unmindful of this matter and devotes a section in its Uber Elevate proposal to the program of air traffic control. So I guess it was officially called, it's called Uber Elevate. Um, not a bad name, if we're being honest. The closest current analogy to what Uber envisions would be the air taxi helicopters that operates in some urban cities. New York City, for example, has a service that offers quality airport shuttle services in and out of Manhattan, but at $1,750 per booking, Again, not counting tip, which we all know Uber would encourage people not to do. That keeps the client base small and the congestion low. A better analogy, Uber argues, is Sao Paulo, Brazil, which has hundreds of helicopters in its commuting fleet and boasts a good safety record all the same. But Uber itself admits that a successful optimized on-demand air system will ne necessitate a significantly higher frequency and airspace density of vehicles operating over metropolitan areas. Handling that flying crunch, Uber says, will require the development of entirely new types of air traffic control system. So the whole article I'll post below, and it's very interesting. Um, obviously, if I don't think the autonomous vehicles are going to be here in 10 years, I would probably be a very old man before we ever see this thing take off, no pun intended. But it is interesting. The big question I still have is, why Uber is investing so much money in this when they are losing billions of dollars every year on growing a market that they can't make money off of because they keep cutting the rates and refuse to ever raise the rates and developing autonomous vehicles that they keep getting fined on for illegally um, driving around. So it's it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it seems like this would do nothing but add an extra billion or two dollars in losses every year at a time when Uber still hasn't actually made any money. All they do is they raise investment capital. That's all they've been doing. And they can't do it forever. Eventually, investors do want their money back. And, I mean, granted, some of the investors are patient. I mean, Amazon.com went through like 15 years of losses before they finally started making money. But the funny thing is they don't make a lot of money now. And you have to wonder, okay, so the investors are finally making money. But... Man, to have your money tied up for 10 or 15 years like that, I, uh, I don't know. Um, so we'll see if U people have the same patience for Uber. We'll just have to see, I guess. So anyway, what do you folks think? Um, even though I think most of us can agree this isn't going to become a reality anytime soon, are you at least fascinating by the idea of the flying Uberless Uber cars? I mean, I'd like to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe. Oh, let's also ask, will the flying cars be autonomous to boot? Comment, anyway, again, comment below. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.